Yes, um, I I always uh, based on the discussions before the the last episode end. I I, I always ask my conversation partners if if they they can accept the new title I give them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always a combination of two weights and in your case I, I'm inclined to call you a, a entrepreneur and philanthropist thank you <laughs> because of, of I know you my PC is very much close to your heart and you do that out of love True. it's your calling but I think you have graduated from corporate and you are self-employed and that's what you wanted to tell us now yeah yeah so so, uh, so you started. Uh, you became self-employed the moment you left that last job. Yeah. And, so for, and how was the transition? Take it. Take us from there. Yeah. So for two years, um, my business was running on its own, and um, before I went full time into it, a, a transition again, Sam. It wasn't. It, I was more worried psychologically because you can understand. Um, you know, the eleventh floor office is quite good, right? Yeah. The privilege and and the the the, the packs that come that comes with being in corporate. So it can mess you up psychologically when you come in and go into your little office. And I'm saying little, bearing in mind that it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. An entrepreneur will never be as big and have a, um, a big building like I was in, 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 in Sin, number six Simon street in, 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 in Senate bank. Mm. So because the environment influences you, when you go to an office, somebody, you've got a PA, you've got this and that, you've got this and that. So it messes you up when you become an entrepreneur, because often at times is you have to do all those things yourself. Mm. Mm. So it, it almost feels um, emotionally as though you are down, you have downgraded, You're downgraded to yourself to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you question yourself that, why did I do this? Was this really what I wanted to do? But, you know, wh- one thing that I learned early on in my in my career or in my life was to have, and I always say it, um, I don't believe in mentors, but, but, but I believe in accountability partners. Mm. So I had an accountability partner who understood where I wanted to go because, can I understand, my parents, I'm in a different environment now because they, they can't give me that support, but now they're looking up to me because the roles changes very quickly as you grow older. So mm. I needed somebody that, that I'm looking up to. Somebody that I'm aspiring, somebody that's, that's, you know, when I dream, I dream like, wow, I wanted to be like Sam. Mm. And I had the conversation with him and said, this is what I wanted to do. Fortunately, I mean, he had, he was doing his PhD already at the time. So he says to me, this is the homework I'm giving you. So this year, which is 2007, um, Mm. from January, you're going to write down what what your life is going to be like when you're an entrepreneur. Mm. So you're going to actually take it down to a level where it says, five o'clock, what are you doing in the morning? And she says to me, you must never ever as an entrepreneur, and I still hold those values now, besides that I use my early morning for prayer. Five o'clock is your time you must go to gym, you mm. know. Um, go to gym, but all, also always have a plan. After gym is what you do. So try and have a normal um, like plan, as though you, you, you were working for Standard Bank, still do the same things that you're doing. When you do that is now the difference is you're going to your own company. You would spend a lot of time at work, so you would get to be engaged and, and do the things that you're supposed to be doing instead of just sitting around and waking up in the morning thinking, where do I start? Mm. Mm. So I would have meetings with him every second week and I had to account. This is what I did. And he was so um, honest in holding me to account, you know. I had a lot of whiplash because it was totally different, you know. Corporate, I was shining because I was compared with my peers, right? Mm. Here, I'm compared with my own potential. Yeah. And I have to now bring out my, pot- my potential. I have to go through self-realization and self-understanding to say, it is up to me to make it happen. And in this time, Sam, I'm providing employment for two for 123 employees at a time. Mm. So I have to set the rules. I have to set this and that. So that helped me because uh, because I had almost like something, I had, I had a, a, a routine that I was doing. And I always kept myself busy. So, and going back to him and accounting back to him, in my mind, it was almost like he is the, actually the CEO of the company. In the meantime, I was, mm. you know, and, and the adjustment wasn't that bad. So this is where the adjustment became, Sam. 
I remember I was in Sentinel and I met one of my my then I think she was in employee, um, employee remuneration at the time, mm. and uh, and I mean she she's not African for obvious reasons to the story is, and she looked at me she says oh you still look very good so it's almost like it was an expectation because I left corporate mm. and I mm. became small business mm. that I would fail, mm. and and just those words. And I said, I said, I said, I prayed. I said, Lord, I thank you for this person. Much as she was trying to ridicule me, mm. but I thank God for the. You know, the Bible says God can turn every ugly thing into good. Mm. And I'm, I'm taking this. If nothing was a motivation for me to succeed, this is going to be a motivation. Yeah. And Sam, this is a very small world, and that's why I value. I mean, I value people like yourself, people that have been in my network, that I will always try and be the best that I can. If I make a mistake, I'll own up to it and learn. Mm. Last year, the very same person came looking for a job at wow. my company. Wow! Because wow. the environment changes, Sam. Very fast. The economic environment changes. You very might be fast. Big today, tomorrow you're not relevant. Mm. Adcon mm. went through tremendous changes. Mm. And you know, you know, when, when, you, you know, if you look at all these organizations, uh, they were started by people like us. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, when Bain came through. Bain did not. Bain saw Adcon, and this is a reality as an investment. Not it did not have any emotional attachment to it. Unlike Steve Ross, unlike um, John Sports, those mm. people understood, and they were devoted to the brand. Bain, we were just a, a, a piece of a monopoly. You know, mm. they didn't see anything. Therefore, even their practices, their the strategies, they would they would show what where their intentions are. So they did not agree with some of the things that they were doing. So they were managing them out. Mm. Lack of a better word, mm. you know. So, 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 so that just shows you that you know the comfort of being in a in a glass office, eleventh floor. I always call it eleventh floor syndrome. Mm. It is just false sense of security. Absolutely, it is. It yeah. is. It is. And all of us have similar ex experiences. The moment we decided to become self-employed. And we only then realize that you that was a false sense of security because Absolutely. when you see things happening from outside, and you realize that that could have been you. Yeah, yeah. Happen, things and, happening to you. Yeah, and, and even your perspective. I mean, my perspective has changed so tremendously. I, for example, with IPM, I became more involved. BMF, I became more, more involved. So I was not even um, standardized. You know, standard bank arise or econ arise. So I was more having. A, 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 an opportunity to be to have a global um, thought process as I was influenced because now I'm in a user network. I'm not in a in a in a, in a nucleus. Uh, you know, mm. I'm, I'm exposed to different things. So my my, my, my my chain of thoughts was very different. So the way I thought was very different. And that, from a self development point of view, I can never take that away because I couldn't have done that if I stayed in one organization because mm. you don't have. You, you don't have luxury of, of networking with everybody, right? You don't have, you've mm. got restrictions to go in certain areas. But now yes. if I'm an entrepreneur, you better believe if you're going to, and, and, and I need to mention to you that I didn't go into HR um, straight. So I was providing landscaping, gardening, which is still contributes about 50% of our business today. Wow. So That's... when I go to clients, mm. I go to clients as a landscaping service provider. But what I lacked is at the time also, I used my HR um to work for me um, in terms of negotiating with your understanding that in that industry is a lot of collective bargaining. So I had, because of my HR experience, I, I, I had to partner with trade unionists and everything. And I warned them over many, many times. It's because I understood where they came from, you know? Mm. So, so it, 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 it is a wonderful thing. I could never, I could never have done a favor to myself. Wow. Than even corporate. Let's let's talk about that. Uh, I I know we spoke about my busy foundation. We will come back to that as well because it's part of your uh, now it's part of your complete entrepreneurship uh, uh, setup. Uh, the other company, uh, what do you, what is the name? Okay, our, our, our main company is Mapizi Holdings. So yes. foundation is just the philanthropic side of our business. Yes. Okay, so Mapizi Holdings, we've got two um, d uh, departments or, or divisions. One is facilities management and the other is HR consulting. Ah, so the facility management, we do most of it. It's landscaping, pest control, vegetation management. Let's say, for example, you're doing your ISO accreditation, would come in and do the consulting work for you in terms of um, in, um, endangered species or indigenous plants and all that. Pest control, you know, anything that has to do with landscaping. And I've got professional landscapers. Uh, we do gardening, 
maintenance and we have, I mean, today we've been providing this forever to companies national. Mm. So we started in, in, in doing for small, small, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, domestic, yes. 2,005 square meters. And, and later on, you realize that it doesn't pay your bills. So you've got to make that difficult decision. Say, okay, 4,000 square meters, or we're going to corporate. So that's one area that we are doing so well in. And um, the industry at the time, you had to have, if you want to to have um, or bid for any, any gardening or, or landscaping, you had to do cleaning. So we almost went into cleaning because of that. But that's not our key focus. And that's why now, thank God today, landscaping can stand on its own. Gardening maintenance can stand on its own. Wow. And, and, and I, I, I mean, I, I know why you went into HR and I know why you, mm. you started MAPC Foundation. But why landscaping? How did that come about? Okay, so I grew up in a very... So my home was very interesting. And I, and I think if, if I were not to reveal my age, people would think I'm probably um, a Generation Y person. Yeah. So I grew up in a, in a home that is very, very, very strict in terms of um, wellness. So wellness in all aspects. Wellness is in the stuff you eat, your spiritual, where you live, you know, it, it has to represent you. So I went to, into landscaping because it was the closest thing for me to do um, in terms of um, liking the outside, the gardens and everything else. So that's basically why I went to, into it. Mm. Mm. Oh, I see. So, but then you had to find... Uh landscapers uh, uh, to, to join your organization. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah I, did, I did a course, and this is another another key thing that entrepreneurs mm. need to do. If, if for, for the day that you, that second when you think you want to go into entrepreneurship, get yourself a mentor, whatever, if you call it a mentor, get that, mm. or get an accountability partner. What he told me, because he was, I mean, he was like 25 years older than me, mm. and he says to me, one thing that you need to understand is, you are not. You are part of the brand, but you're not the brand. So you need to to to, to have people that are qualified in the services that you're offering, and don't feel bad because those are the people that are going to make money for the company. Mm. So I did a course just to understand what landscaping is all about. Because gardening maintenance, when you do it at home and when you do it professionally, it's let me tell you, it's totally different. Mm. The science and this technology that governs that, there's rules that governs it. Um, it's not just a hobby, you know. Being doing a hobby, it's it's different. So I have I have those professional people that that have uh, that, that that does that. And also because I'm an HR person, I used to get people from um, specially TUT that studied uh, studied horticulture. They would come in to do their internship with us. As soon as they're qualified, if we do have jobs, we do absorb them. You know, those, those are small basic principles that we did. So we, we had clients national, so in PE, East London, Cape Town, Durban, and that's where I used to travel. You know, and, and in that, while you engage with those clients, that's where we started going into the HR fraternity. Mm, mm. And, and today, I mean, we, we, we do a lot of um, HR from policy, strategies, boards, you know, and all that. Mm, mm. Wow. Uh, this is beautiful. I, I, I have uh, a belief that uh, people that have made it in the corporate world as professionals should be, be becoming the best entrepreneurs because they've seen it. They know yeah. it. Yeah, we, uh, should, we should, we should. Because, because it, otherwise you wait to be told that you, you are old now, you must retire. And then you yeah. go home and to start at that time, it might just be difficult. And I think, Absol I think you studying MAPC Foundation so early, I'm sure mm. you were destined to become an entrepreneur, right? No, no. Uh, Sam, I, I think I mentioned to you when I was 12 years old, my dad, those are the conversations that we had. So it's, it's no surprise. It was no surprise to my parents. I mean, my dad said he passed on um, three months after I got married. And, and that was sad because he didn't get to see the, the results of, what, of, of his hard work. Mm -hmm. My stepmom is not surprised. He knew, she knew. Because mm -hmm. already at the get-go, I knew that I was going to be doing that. I mean, my dad was a driver, truck driver. He worked for ABI. He worked for St Stewart and Lloyds. And at home, he used to do, I did a gate, you know, um, uh, all the steel works and everything else. And I learned to do those things. So guess who was doing the books for him? I was doing the books for him. Mm. And I had to be the debt collector and all those kind of things. And he told me there and then, Michael, this is where I want you to be. Mm. Mm. So it was no surprise at all. Wow. Wow. Uh, nevertheless, what what are the things that you, if you were to advise professionals out there, 
that are wobbling now because of changes and they're wondering what next to do. Uh, uh, and they might be thinking, sure, should I jump into this entrepreneurship thing? Uh, what, 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 what do you think are the, the logical steps they need to start looking at before they make that jump? You, you, you know, before I answer, Sam, much as parenting is never a one-size-fits-all. This mm. is whatever the, 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 the tips I share now. Um, it's only tips that worked for me. And, and I don't think it can work for everybody else. But I, I think the rationale here is do not jump because you see somebody else doing it. Mm. And if, if you, you've got to go deep down and find out for yourself, what am I doing this for? Am I doing it because, and, and, and remember, some looks can be very deceiving. We do understand, we know that we live in a very highly, highly, highly corrupt economic environment now. Mm. So when you see so-and-so driving this and this, is that your motivation to go into entrepreneurship? And I can tell you, if that is the case, then you, you're the wrong person or it is the wrong time for you. Mm. However, if you say, I want to go and make a difference, and while making a difference, definitely you need to, it, it, you're doing it for your economic inv- advancements. That's the difference. Then you start thinking, okay, now what, 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 what is it that I can do? Some people get into entrepreneurship by accident because mm. they are retrenched. But guess what? We're living in much as we've got COVID-19, the pandemic, and it changes and shifts, and, and now it removes you from your 13th floor again. It forces you to be working from home. But the environment is so fertile, the environment is so conducive today for people to be consultants. Consultants, as in, if you're an accountant, you can go and offer those services to Mm. other companies. And we're looking at the future of work, as I said, we both know that the future of work is very different. Mm. You know, the layout is very different. People don't want to be working from um, for companies eight to five. You want to be go Starbucks and you're saving 17 clients. It's more about the value that you're bringing more than the bounce on the seats. In the mm. olden days, leadership, you understand, you used to call it MBO, managed by, by objectives. Mm. So it's actually a very good time for now to do. So first things are first. You do have your, your financial obligations. Sit down, be honest with yourself. If the place, places you can cut down, definitely cut those things down, you know? Mm. Um, so those are by accident. But people that are planning, you've got luxury of time. So you've got to sit down, have conversations, see things that you can get rid of because entrepreneurship, it's not... Remember, everything now, it's, it's on your head. Mm. People are looking up to you to provide where you were waiting for a salary. I mean, I remember with myself, I had to downgrade a house, mm. you know, mm. because I needed... I knew that I definitely cannot downgrade my kids', my kids education because I believe in education, but I needed to downgrade a house, but still mm. provide it very comfortable. I did those things. And Sam... Um, ever since I've never been blacklisted, I've never, I've never had, you know, I'm, I'm moving in my own pace and I'm not, I'm not competing with anybody. Mm. You know, I'm moving in my own pace. I have my own goals and be comfortable in the skin that you're in. I've had to turn, prepared. I've had to turn my house into office. <laughs> Sam, you, you get what I mean? And even now when, when I have my office, part mm. of my house is an office because a client can call me anytime. Mm. Mm. You know, so, mm. so, so you need to sit down. I, 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 think, I think what we are doing now, what we are currently tackling now, is what we call, the, we, are, we are describing what the true entrepreneurship is. Yeah. And, yeah. and, 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 and it's not even South African, is it global? You know, mm-hmm. an so entrepreneur so knows exactly what to cut off. Absolutely. And if it's painful, then you know that you still haven't grown as much. Mm. But it's a lifestyle, isn't it? It is a lifestyle. It, yeah. it is a lifestyle. It, it, it informs everything. In fact, everything that you do in life gets informed by you being an entrepreneur. Mm. You know, um, I remember in the early days, formative years, where I had to learn um, that now, remember my husband, my ex-husband is normal there, and he was there. I mean, we both work, but I mean, uh, you do know, often ladies, we marry people that um, earn much more than us. So he was not there. So I needed to provide for my children. So the mm. best thing to do is now to ensure that I pay for their school fees, mm. um, cash, you know, and ensure that everything's sorted. So I don't want the pain of every month, mm. you know, mm. and mm. cut off those things. And I mean, you learn tomorrow, you make mistakes, but also it's a difficult one, Sam, because um, I, I have been a victim of, of, of being shot at because of, of corruption where people wanted, wanted to manage you out mm. of, of um, uh, tenders or RFQ. So uh, uh, it, it, it's not all rosy, I must be honest. So yes. you, you will become somebody's uh, competition yes. and people will take you out. Mm. If it means bad-mouthing you, they'll bad-mouth you. If they see that you don't, I mean, I'm from corporate and corporate, you pay your school fees. I mean, it, it molds you. You get to have EQ, you get to 
understand that you can have your uh, mm. corporate squabbles and, and, and negotiate for your betterment in the boardroom. So if they mm. cannot, especially when you're a woman, Sam, especially in that industry, yes. if they're not, they cannot defeat you, they would want to defeat you physically. Mm. And, and it is mm. what it is because mm. of um, the environment that we live in now. Mm. But I'm, I mean, it's a wonderful thing to, to, to realize that slowly, slow as it is, the landscape is changing. More and more women are emerging as entrepreneurs. And, sure. and I think I've had quite a number of them here, and I would like to have more of them on the platform because the change that is going to happen is going to happen from the fellow men colleagues in the Absolutely. industry. Because, because we, 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 the country's future is dependent on successful entrepreneurship by all of us. Yeah. All of us, all of mm. us, including disabled, yes. uh, your, your, your youth and all those kind of things. So it is a beautiful journey, Sam. So in the 17 years that I've been in, I would recommend it and I do not regret ever. Very fulfilling, yeah? And I'm very appreciative, though, I need to say that I'm very appreciative of what I've learned at Adcon. It's difficult for people that want to be entrepreneurs where they have no corporate experience. They don't mm. understand certain things. Mm. And, you know, I had that experience and it taught me. It made me understand and be sensitive to certain things because I was groomed um, at, at, at corporate. So I'm really, really grateful. And to people like yourselves, people that are made at IPM, it might mm. be at a distance. You know, I, I get people and I take, um, I make it my, 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 my objective to learn something out of every person. Mm. So, I mean, it's, it's really, really a wonderful, wonderful. I'm so satisfied. I'm so comfortable with where I am. I definitely have more of more dreams and I aspire to get more, but I'm definitely comfortable where I am now. Wonderful. Beautiful stuff. And then I'm not going to spend so much time on your HR when I'm sure that is, is, is self-explanatory. You do have clients that come to you for your insight and knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and you, you, you do yeah. consulting, and, and yeah. of course you have visibility. We actually do, yeah. We have clients on retainer, so there's two t clients that we have. Mm. So out of the years, we learned to even make um, you, you know the same entrepreneurs. Mm. So they don't have HR um, departments in their company, so they have nobody that's advising them on policy, on strategies, on compliance, from a legislative to everything else. So we do offer that, and we have clients on a retainer basis, and also some of those clients. Um, I sit on their boards, and then we have um, clients that come on an ad hoc, whether it's labor relations and, and, and yeah. Mm. And I, I really, I, I want to applaud you and acknowledge you for the great work you are doing for the Institute of People Management. Thank and then, you. And sometimes we never have time, we don't have chance to, to acknowledge. I mean, that is very critical work that you sure. do as a volunteer, especially on the award and excellence committee i mean uh, thank you we have, we have we have seen the the impact of your work together with other colleagues there and i can thank always you. see i always see the big smile at the convention when, when <laughs> a, i think it's more of a relief than a smile <laughs> i know <laughs> but because you love it, you, you do it with passion and now today thank i got to understand that it didn't, it didn't only just start now you have always yeah. been associated with the ipm mm. So it's 26 years today. Wow, beautiful. Sure, yeah. Uh, you, did you listen to the interview I had with Reli I couldn't listen to all of it. Um, and hmm. I think, in fact, I listened to some of it last week on the LinkedIn. Um, you'll see I only liked it last week. I, I liked it at first and then I listened to it last week. It was not full. I, I didn't listen yes. to it. I, I, I'm, I'm pro we'll probably rebroadcast it or otherwise I could send okay. you the, the, the links from the, the podcast. Link. Yes, please. Please do that. that. Because I think this, this link up with, very well with the great work that he has, he has done. Mm. So, so the, the other objective of this platform is not just to listen to your story, but as you had me at the introduction, that we want purposefully to connect, uh, to network entrepreneurs, to sure. network entrepreneurs with their potential uh, customers and stakeholders. Uh, the last part of the, of, the, of the conversation is always to make sure that people know how to get hold of you for whatever sure. reasons. We believe very strongly that there is, there is not enough of us to meet the demand out there. And, and we cannot behave in a way that uh, is self-defeating. And therefore, when you come and inspire people through your story, we must also contribute in the form of let people be able to get a hold of you. If we can grow the economy, we can grow everybody. So how, how do people get a hold of you? Okay, so we, we, I, I am on, 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 on um, Twitter. 
Twitter. So I, I, I stumbled because I'm such a private person. So I had to learn that social media is an enabler for business. It's not just... It's not about you. <laughs> I know. So we all learn, right? So yes. it's a constant learning environment. So I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. So Twitter is Rehab Matibani. Instagram is Rehab Matibani. And, and I thank God for Miss Africa because it, it is the one that taught us to, to go into, mm. into social media. Mm. Um, I'm not in Facebook. I mean, I had a Facebook account. We're not on Facebook. But in terms of the company, our website is www dot mapizi dot co dot z a and yeah if you spell mapizi please mapizi is m a p i t s i dot co dot z a so it's mm. one m mm. Mm. okay and um, email you can send info or admin or rehab at mapizi dot co dot z a beautiful beautiful um your story is so inspiring especially for ladies out there. And, and thank you for being very open about, you know, sometimes people think when we say we are going to have a conversation around your journey, they think that we are interested in the failings that people have. We all have failings and we learn from them. And when True. we tell our story openly like this, we help other people to also realize that they thought it's only them. It's just the way of life. We have stumbling yeah. blocks all the way. And through that, we learn. Mm. Yeah. Any closing remarks from your side? I think I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and thank you for the opportunity. You know, um, it's very difficult, much as I'm a speaker, but it's very difficult often to speak about myself because as, as somebody that's driven by humility, it's a fine line to say, are you that proud? However, you've, you've summed it up nicely to say it's an opportunity to share with others. But as I'm speaking right away, I mean, all the stuff that I spoke about, it rekindled and revived some of the work that I still wanted to do. So it's a real opportunity. It was a moment of reflection for me. And I hope um, through 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 Cometa and, and all the other networks that we're able to learn from each other. And as an organization, we learn from other organizations. And yeah, I'm really grateful for this. Thank Th you. Thank you very much. It's us who are very grateful for for the insights you shared with uh, it's, it's, mm. it's it's really quite it's been quite beautiful and and i'm sure the learners i mean the listeners will will agree and, yeah. and and thanks thanks again for agreeing to 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 be with us on the on the yeah. commercial radio africa platform. it's only a pleasure beautiful dear listeners ladies and gentlemen that was uh rehab madevani a great story indeed great inspiration i hope you pick up something for yourself and if need be, feel free to contact her and, uh, and, and engage with her much more deeper. Once again, my name is Sam Zima. I am the CEO and the Executive Business Coach at Commerza GOC International. You, vi you may visit our website, www.commerza-goc.com. And should you want to apply for individual or corporate membership at Commerza Friends and Supporters Club and PO, and be part of this virtual movement of really inspiring and encouraging professionals and entrepreneurs to give more to our country, the continent, and the world. Join us online. Uh, uh, take the membership online at www.commerzaclub.africa. You are welcome also to send us email at callcenter at commerza-goc.com. We thank you for tuning in. We are looking forward to welcoming you at our next broadcast. And for now, we say goodbye, be safe, and take care.